Wonderful. Good morning from the beautiful valley of Engadin. Here in Switzerland, we are in Maloya, the start of the Engadin Ski Marathon, 53rd edition. And we start right away with the race course starting in Maloya and then leading over three lakes to the finish of Sanf. The first lake we're passing is the Silza Lake until the 10 kilometers mark in Silva Plana, then over the next lake, Silva Plana Lake. And for the first time in history, we're heading over the Sant Moritza Lake, then kilometer mark 20, Pontresina. And we're passing the valley of Samedan. La Punt is the second sprint, and then a long descent to the finish in Sanf. Yes, 43.5 kilometers this year, small changes on the race course. We start on 1,850 meters and then a descent of 150 meters to the finish. Yeah, when I look outside of my window, I'm sitting here in Sanf, then I'm seeing a great day for marathon skiing. The weather conditions couldn't be better now. It's about two plus degrees. The sun is working hard on coming through the clouds and then we are awaiting a great day of marathon skiing. My name is Gunnar Slöbel. I'm your commentator for today's live broadcast of the 53rd edition of the Engadin Ski Marathon, the second largest ski race in the world with about 13,000 skiers today. The major part of them will do the race in skating style, of course. It's the biggest ski race in skating style, but also some skiers in classic style. Yeah, we had uh, some changes on the race course. Usually it's 42 kilometers, but this year 1.5 kilometers longer. The organizers had to do a very, very hard job to make this race happen. The early spring temperatures made it almost impossible to make this race happen, but the organizers did a great job. Yeah, here is the start list of the women's. Of course, the strongest nation is Switzerland. Almost the whole Switzerland, Swiss national team is on the start. Nadina Kellin will be the top favorite, the winner of last year, but she get strong company from uh, from France, also from the US, great skiers who will try to challenge her. Also her sister is on the start, Marina Kellin. And from the US we have Margaret Lane, who won the König Ludwig Lauf this year already, so it won't be easy for Kellen. Only a few moments for the women to start. They will start three minutes ahead of the men. Here you see the men's uh, starting line right behind the women. Three minutes after the women start, we're gonna see the men starting. Yeah, another name to watch for is Stephanie Böhler from Germany, number 320. Her professional career, she ended already in 2018, but she already has two Olympic medals. So she's probably also a name to look out for. Emilie Bulle from France. She also performed very well this season already. Number 325. She won the Dolomitenlauf in Austria, second in Transjurassien in France, and third place in the Canadian Gatineau Lopez. So also she is a number to look out for. As you can see here, the first kilometers will lead over the first lake. And the lakes were the biggest challenge for the organizers this year almost no snow on the lake so the skiers will ski yeah almost on bare ice and here is the start the ladies go the first hundred skiers are out there now heading on the lake on the Sinsa lake there they will ski almost just on crushed ice but the good thing is Three days ago, we had some snowfalls here in the Engading Valley and they made it 
possible that the tracks on the legs could be prepared. Okay, now let's see who are the skiers who go into the front. The Engadin Ski Marathon is a race where the start is very important. First of all, the race is very fast. It's not too long. We await something about one hour and 30 for the ladies. So the start is very important to gain a good position already in the start because every position you will lose, lose on the start, you have to work very hard for to come to the top of the group again. Yeah, as we thought already, the Swiss ladies are building the lead. It seems like they start with not the highest pace into the race. Finding the positions first. Yeah, and in only a few moments, the men will start. And in the men's competitions, there is the big question. Can Roman Furga or Dario Colonia manage to win the Engadin Ski Marathon for the fifth time? Both have won it for four times. They're the most successful skiers here over the past decades. Roman Furga and Dario Colonia from Switzerland. But Maurice Magnifica from France will challenge them, of course, Olympian. Then we have... Uh, very well-known name from Norway, Torane Hedland. Of course, not a professional skier anymore, but we will see. Maybe he can challenge the top skiers still. Jonas Baumann is also a name we should have a look at. And maybe number 34, Fabian Stotzek, a hidden a secret favorite for the victory. He has also had some victories this year already. It was a lot, but he was um, among the first 50 and he won the König Ludwig Lauf in freestyle. So probably a favorite, a hidden favorite. We will know in not even one hour and 30 minutes. Now the weather turns out to be great again. We know the Engadin Ski Marathon only with sunshine. Here comes the start. And here it goes. Off the go. 43.5 kilometers skating style ahead of the men. Now you can see that the lake is already melting right next to the start. But the final course inspection this morning said that the track is in a great condition. On the lakes, a very fast track. It's almost just ice. And the Engadin Ski Marathon is leading over 35 kilometers on lakes. So more than 35 kilometers are leading over lakes. Beautiful shots here with the mountain range. I think this is the the great and the special thing about the Engadin Ski Marathon. This Valley of Engadin, such a beautiful place for winter sports. Very well known for winter sports. The surroundings, mountain, and usually in the beginning of March, we always have sunshine, nice temperatures for the Engadin Ski Marathon. The leading group of the ladies is already halfway through the first lake, the Silza Lake. And we have a young Swiss lady doing the leading work. Jeren Zeller, Jäger, Christa. 
Yeah, this race is always a good opportunity for young skiers, for local skiers, for not yet well-known skiers to perform well, to put their names on the international results list for the first time. Nadina Kalin, last year's winner, she was quite a surprise winner last year when she was only 20 years old, now 21 years, very young. She skied at the World Championships past week in Planica. Didn't perform as well as she wished to. So this is a very important race for her. If she could repeat her victory, this would bring back some self-confidence to her. We can see that even uh, some classic tracks are prepared on the lake. This was the big question, if they can prepare also classic style tracks. They probably won't be the best tracks, but they were able to do something on the lakes. As you might know, the Engadin Ski Marathon is the only race where you could ski in skating style or classic style. And it's the same race. Usually you have two different races here. Both techniques are combined in one race. But of course the majority is doing the race in skating style. Only the popular skiers far in the back, some of them are skiing in classic style. As I said at the start, the first leg is already important at the Engadin Ski Marathon because the first skiers, they will drop off this leading group already on this first 10 kilometers. Yeah, another young lady on top of the group now. She is making the pace. 20-year-old Elma Malia from Switzerland. Due to the challenging weather and snow conditions, the tracks had to be adapted for this year. So for the first time, and this is probably the major change of the course, is that the race course will lead over the St. Moritzer See, St. Moritzer Lake. So it's the third lake that the track will pass. Then it's another uphill section, a short but steep uphill section, 60 meters climb near St. Moritz and there the tracks will be quite narrow you probably know the Stadsavald which is a 
Yeah, challenging downhill section and this year it will be even more challenging as it's quite narrow. Now here on the leading work. We saw Mathieu Golabri from France. Yeah, probably it will be a question if Switzerland or France will be on top of the podium this year in both genders. Number 12, Adler Roman, a local skier from Pontresina, 18 years old. So maybe highly motivated to put his name on an international results list. And of course with number two, the one, the only, Dario Colonia. Four victories here at the Engadin Ski Marathon already in 2019, 17, 2010 and 2007. He was standing on top of the podium but also two second places in 2022 last year and in 2018. So he knows the Engadin Ski Marathon perfectly and he will probably yeah, I would be surprised if we won't see him on the podium today. And the same counts for Roman Furger, who won also four times here last year. Then in 2018, 16 and 2012, he was on top of the podium. Juan Herich from France on top of the group. Let's see, he has two, three meters gap. Maybe he's using this two, three meters for a small first attack. But probably not. These attacks on this stage of the race are definitely not serious attacks to go for the victory of course it's too far to the finish but to get rid rid of some company to make this leading group smaller and smaller no but he is looking to his back already where are the others maybe he's doing leading work for some minutes and then i'm quite sure he will go back again to not lose too much energy. So the first ladies are overtaken by the men leading group. This was the plan of the organizers that after the first leg, somewhere around Sils or between Sils and Sivalpana, they will overtake the ladies. These uh, beautiful villages, mountain villages, are the characteristics of the Engadin Ski Marathon. Yeah, the pace is not very high. It seems like slow pace, so we're definitely not going to see a course record today. I think we can say that already now, due to the conditions. Mainly, the course record is 1 hour 22 and 22 seconds. By whom, guess who, Dario Colonia in 2019. Yeah, the sun is coming through. So the conditions will become faster and faster the more the sun comes through. Antoine Herriger from France still in the lead.
also going to see two intermediate sprints. One at this new section, they call it the Mayarai near St. Moritz. So this will be the first sprint about af after about 15 kilometers. And then the second sprint in La Punt at kilometer 34. So Elma Malia is still leading this group, doing a hard work, followed by Nicole Donsala, also from Switzerland. Last year, 22% of the starting field were female skiers. But in the half marathon distance, it was already 47%, so almost half of the starters. Okay, now we're going to change, have a change in the lead, and it's Kelly Nadia who is taking over the lead now. Maybe the pace until now was too slow for her. Siri Viga also from Switzerland, 308 on her side. And behind her, Anja Weber from Switzerland with 206. So the Swiss team is taking over the leading work now. So probably we're going to see now an increase in the pace. And this is Marina Kellen now in the lead. The two sisters, Marina and Nadia Kellen, leading this field right now. Marina Kellen, sister of Nadia, she's even younger, 19 years old, but she also performed, performed quite well in 2018 and 19 at the short distance, so the half marathon distance. She finished fourth and fifth. Yeah, now we see only a few hundred meters between the women's leading group and the leading group of the men. Only a few minutes until the men will overtake the women. Now here, the big Frenchman, Maurice Magnifica, Olympian and one of the best skiers from France in elite. He is probably the biggest threat for the Swiss skiers this time. This year, he finished second in Lautran Chirassien, the, France, the French World Loppet race. Here at the Engadin Ski Marathon, he finished sixth in 2019 and 2017. He just missed the podium with a fourth place. So also he knows how to ski and how to perform well at the Engadin Ski Marathon, but the podium is missing for him. Maurice Magnifica, so probably today for the first time on the podium of Engadin Ski Marathon. He knows how it feels like to stand on podiums four times 
third place at Olympics. Past Olympics in Beijing. He was on the podium with the relay. Then in Pyeongchang in 2018, relay and team sprint. Also bronze medals. And in 2014, again in the relay on the podium. Is followed by a young Swiss skier. I see it correctly. It's Anton Savary. <laughs> oh, look at these tracks. They're really just ice. Also, when they prepared the tracks this night, they tried to crash the ice. So it's, yeah, a mixture of fresh snow and crushed ice. And this makes this track a fast one. Maybe for the thousands of popular skiers who come, who are starting right now in the starting waves, it will become a little soft and deep. But all in all, it should be a great race. Also, for the 13,000 popular skiers. Yeah, here we are going to see some changes in the lead now. But it seems like Maurice Magnifica is really increasing the pace. So he is not interested to have a big leading group. He wants to stretch this group already now. And as we can see from above, it's already clearing up. Some 10, 15 skiers are building a small group here in the front. But now let's see when they overtake the leading group of the ladies, then everything will be mixed up again, probably. Now it's very important for the ladies to find a good spot to follow this leading group of the men as long as possible. This is what I was talking at the start of the ladies. This is why the beginning of the Engadin Ski Marathon is so important, especially for the ladies. You need to have a good position, especially when the men's leading group is coming and overtaking the leading group of the ladies. Because now it's important to find your spot in this leading group, to follow the group as long as possible. If you cannot manage this, then you cannot win this race. If you lose the leading group of the men right now, then you will not be on the podium. So we will see. And soon the skiers will exit the first lake, the Silza Lake. Then only a few short kilometers to the next lake, Silva Plana. On the probably 6th, 7th position, I see the tall German guy. His name is Max Olex. Maybe also some kind of a secret favorite. Maybe not from the, for the overall victory, but definitely for the first 10, maybe even first 5. He also already won some World Loppet marathons. He has won the König Ludwig Lauf, for example, also in skating style, so he's definitely a specialist in skating. Usually skiing more often the short distance races, but he, as this race is that fast and short when it comes to time, with one and a half hours, he could be a secret favorite. Maybe we'll see him among the first 10. That's my guess. Max Olex from Germany, Adidas, 
XC Ski Team. Magnifica, very focused. Yeah, you see how the tracks change immediately when they leave the lake. Now they're skiing mostly on artificial snow. Of course, we have a layer of some fresh snow also tonight. I mean, tonight it was only one centimeter maybe of fresh snow. But over the past two, three days, there was a small layer of snow coming, but the major part of these tracks are is artificial snow without artificial snow the organizers said this race would definitely not have taken place here we are at surley the next valley it was the venue of 2021's world cup final when the engelin ski marathon organization committee agreed to take over the World Cup final from Oslo. Unfortunately, in Oslo they had to cancel it due to the, to the COVID situation. And only in two weeks, the organizers of Engadin Ski Marathon organized the World Cup final. And the long distance race was taking place on these tracks, on the legendary Engadin Ski Marathon tracks. Another Frenchman, Mathieu Golabré, on the second position now. Following his compatriot, Maurice Magnifica. So here are the first standings after 11 kilometers. Magnifica, Golabré, Condi Prolong from Switzerland, another strong skier we should look out for. Eirik Bransdal from Norway on ninth position. He is actually a sprinter. But again, as this is a very fast and a short marathon when it comes to time, he could probably use his sprint abilities and a final sprint. Almost every Engadin ski marathon competition is decided on the final meters anyway. So Nadia Kellen in the lead, Leah Fischer from Switzerland second, and Siri Wiga third. Then Celine Chopard Lallier from France, the first not Swiss lady on the fourth position. Emilie Bulle also from France, tenth position. So when we have a look on this standings after 11 kilometers, also in the ladies' race, it will be just a question between Switzerland and France who will have the podium places. Emilie Bulle also performed very well this season already. Winner at the Dolomitenlauf, second place at La Tranchiracienne and third place at the Gatineau Loppet, the Canadian World Loppet race. So she has her podiums at international ski marathons already.
organizers had to adapt not only the tracks this time. Oh man, look at the lake on the right side. It's melting already. So spring is really coming in big, big steps here. This was challenging for the organizers. Many sleepless nights over the past days. Tonight even 20 groomers have been out there to prepare these tracks. A few days ago, or weeks ago, the organizers almost had been at the point that they had to cancel the race. But then some fresh snow came and made this happen. The lakes were the big problem because of the high temperatures, spring temperatures. There was already so much water on the ice. So the organizers always were just longing for the nights, hoping it would freeze a lot over the night. And during the days, they were hoping for low temperatures. Yeah, it cost a lot of energy to make this race happen this season. But it's definitely worth it. Of course, this race is very important for the region. The cancellation is just not good for this region. Of course, the whole winter tourism, hotelry, the ski clubs, and each and every person living in the Valley of Engadin is somehow related to this race. Eleven local ski clubs are working together to make this race happen. Year by year, thousands of volunteers are just mandatory to make this race happen. And when you see these pictures and then later in the finish, the smile of every skier, not only the winners, not only the first elite skiers, but especially when you see into the faces of the popular skiers, then you know it's worth it. Oh, here, the first breakaway. Candid Prolong, he is definitely going for the first intermediate sprint in St. Moritz. Candid Prolong, Swiss national team. And also quite a good marathon skier. He knows how to ski these races. Some seasons he was focusing on the World Loppet races. He even won the World Loppet Cup, which was consisting out of seven or eight World Loppet races every season. So let's see if he can, if this gap he created right now is enough to win the first intermediate sprint in St. Moritz. I think everyone related to winter sports knows this place, St. Moritz in Engadin. Host of two Winter Olympics in 1928 and 48. Host of five Alpine Ski World Championships. The last one in 2017. And a very important village for the Engadin Ski Marathon. Back in time, this was also the venue of the night sprint and the marathon village. This, the organizers have moved to Pontresina now, the marathon village. But still, such an important and iconic place. St. Moritz for the Engerin Ski Marathon. And soon we should see the first changes of the race course when the course will lead over the lake of St. Moritz. Here's a small uphill section. 
Usually the intermediate, intermediate sprint was right here where the skiers are passing now, but they shifted it due to the course changes. looking over his shoulder where are the others but it's a good gap already it's about maybe 30 meters Adriano Isepi, the race organizer, the race director, spoke about 80% of artificial snow. 80% of the tracks are run over artificial snow. So without artificial snow, this race would definitely not take place this year. A fact that we, as skiers, somehow have to deal with. The role of artificial snow will become more and more important and maybe or quite sure we will have the situation that without artificial snow this sport won't be possible anymore or only in certain places and just certain times of the winter. But generally, this was a quite good year for the ski marathons. A good year if you have a look at the World Loppet Series, the International Ski Federation for Ski Marathons, uniting 19 of the biggest ski marathons in the world. Then all the ski marathons this year could have taken place, which was such a relief after all the corona pandemic cancellations, then bad winters, and now a winter with good snow, no restrictions. All ski marathons, all important ski marathons were able to be held. So now the skiers are heading on this new section on the track over the St. Moritz Lake. For the first time in history, a third leg added to the race course. Khalid Palong working hard. He's not chill riding, but here a Swiss connection of four Swiss skiers. They now have the plan to... No, it's five, six Swiss skiers to catch their compatriots. But he won't make it easy for them. Now it would be interesting where the first ladies have found their spot. If there is still a lady in this leading group or not. Of course, it's not easy for the Skido riders to find the first ladies and still following the leading group but maybe we can see some pictures also of the leading ladies
Yeah, but we see here this high pace already formed the leading group of about yeah 20 25 skiers and they if you have lost the leading group in this race with this high speed this short time you pr you won't make it back to the leading group again so if you lead if you lose the leading group then your fight for the top 10 is definitely over. Yeah, even though the Engadin Ski Marathon race course is quite an easy one, it's um, descending the most, the major part of the race, 150 meters is, the finish is lower than the start. There are only two serious uphill sections, the rest is flat or even downhill but still the race is quite a tough one i think we are now heading to this first intermediate sprint if i see it correctly the helvetia sprint yep and it's not prolonged anymore in the lead i think yeah maybe he gambled wrong who is the skier in front if I see it correctly, it's a uh, number eight, Niklas Steiger, also from Switzerland. No, sorry. Number 12, Roman Adler. He won this first intermediate sprint. It seems like Candide Prolong, he gambled not very well for this first intermediate sprint, just right before the sprint. Roman Adler, his compatriot, overtook him again. But if you ask me for Candide Prolong, this overall ranking is definitely more important. Yeah, and here comes this very narrow part. As you can see, it's only a white stripe. Not more possible. Only one skier, one by one, can go up here. This uphill, it's the new section. They call it the Meierei, right after St. Moritz. But it seems like the track condition is quite good on this small band, at least. And this is one of the few serious uphill sections. The organizers spoke about 60 meters climb. And it seems like this is the leading woman with start number 300 and... Five. This is Julia Vero. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Seems like she has found some skiers to go together with. Yeah, this is the big tactics, the big tactic part in the ladies' race to find a good group of men to ski together with to get rid of the contesters. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are heading into the Stadtsowald, this famous section of the race, a very famous downhill section. Also, maybe a dangerous downhill section. Many, many crashes are happening here, especially when the popular skiers are heading there. It's quite narrow. Especially this year. Good in red, number 10 on the second position now, following Beda Klee, also from Switzerland, number 13. So the young Swiss skiers having their fun out there this time. It's, yeah, their time now. Maybe when it comes to the final decision, other names will be in front, but now it's their time to be on the camera on an international ski race to be on the results list of an international ski race and who knows maybe we see a surprise winner or at least surprising names on the podium or on, among the first 10 skiers the deal with the english dean ski marathon is to keep on 
skiing with the elite group, with the leading group, until the, uh, the final 300 meters and then get a good position in this leading group before the final turn, when it comes to the final stretch, and then just have an uh, explosive finish. Look how beautiful <laughs> it looks like. We could even be in Norway or Sweden or somewhere, but no, this is the valley of Engadin. So beautiful, Stadsavald. And every time when I see these pictures, I have to say a big thank you and big congratulations to the organizers that they were able to create this track. Of course, it's narrow on some parts. Of course, it was very icy on the lakes, but we can have a decent and a great edition of Engadin Ski Marathon in 2023. And this is what counts. So slowly halfway through. Not too far anymore to Pontresina, which would be the finish of the half marathon distance. Look at these beautiful tracks. Good in Reds now overtaking the lead. And Roman Furger on position number three. Roman Furger, he's going to end his career after this season. A great career. So the last Engadin Ski Marathon as an elite pro skier. I'm quite sure it won't be the last Engadin Ski Marathon for him, but the last as elite skier. And here is our leading lady. Julia Vero from Switzerland has found a group to ski together with. We don't know yet her gap to the second lady. It seems like she played very good tactics so far. Yeah, Stadzerwald is definitely one iconic section of the Engadin Ski Marathon that this race is famous for. I can remember when I skied it during the pandemic time, the, the Engadin Individual, when you had to ski the Engadin Ski Marathon on your own. They build up the start and the finish, prepared the tracks. You just took your timing chip and did the race on your own. And I remember this section, even though I was skiing alone there, still it was a challenging downhill section. Now imagine doing this section with thousands of other skiers together. So it's a challenging downhill part. <laughs> Okay, we hear the commentator on the tracks. The skiers are heading to Celarina. There is another sprint section, the Sunrise Sprint, which is new this year. It's 75 meters and every skier of these 13,000 skiers can... Oh, excuse me, no, we're in Pontresina yet. I'm a little bit too far already. No, that's Pontresina, yeah. The halfway end of the half marathon and Kudin Reds is in the leading possession, followed by three more Swiss skiers. So, as you have seen, 20, 25 skiers together here after half of the race. Now soon we should see the 
ranking in the ladies competition there in Pontresina, the halfway. Pontresina, the new venue of the Marathon Village. Here first feedings on the feeding station. Usually the skiers at the marathon, the elite skiers, they have backpacks with drinks with them. Steiner Cedric in the lead now from Davos. Usually they have backpacks with drinks with them, but not at the Engadin Ski Marathon. It's only one hour and 30 minutes. So many skiers leave their backpack home, others to take it with them. All of this is part of the tactics during a race. Of course, it's extra weight. And if you only ski for one hour 30, it's probably better to leave the backpack home and get some drinks at the feeding stations. But yeah, some skiers took it with them, others not. First lady still has not passed Pontresina, but now she's heading there. Now we should see. Yeah, now she passed Pontresina, Juliana Vero, number 305. Now it's going to be interesting. Yeah, Kellen, Nadia, and her sister Marina. 15 seconds in back and another two Swiss skiers with them in a group. So there is another group of ladies. I think these five Swiss ladies will be fighting for the top three positions. Emilie Bulle and Céline chopal the French skiers, are already back with 40 seconds almost. It will be hard for them to fight for the podium. Juliana Vero has found a good group to ski together with. Oh man, these are pictures we are not used to at the Engadin Ski Marathon. A white stripe in a brown valley, at least at this part of the race. But now you can imagine the tough work of the organizers of the course, masters of the groomers over the past days to make this happen. Fifty-two minutes in the race now. Anjele Chara here, in the very back of the leading group. Also a French skier who performed quite well in the various World Open Ski Marathons this year. He made a North American tour. He skied the American Birkebeiner, which is also a World Open race finished second there. He won the Gatineau Loppet, the Canadian World Loppet race, one week earlier. Last year at the Engadin Ski Marathon, he finished sixth. So he is definitely 
also a person who could probably stand on the podium in the end. Kurt in red. Beautiful to watch him. Beautiful technique. It seems like he's having a great day, making a lot of le leading work. His best result here in 2022 with an 8th place. So also, yeah, there are so many names who can stand on the podium. Of course, the big favorite is probably Roman Forga. He is at least my favorite. Fi fi he's my favorite even before Dario Colonia because he performed better over the past years. And of course, Colonia is not an active pro athlete anymore, but Roman Furga still is, even though he's ending his career after this season. Fabrizio Albasini from Switzerland now overtaking the lead. <laughs> yeah, so many names who could probably be on the podium. This is because if you were managed to follow the leading group over the first half of the race, then and over these first uphill sections, then the rest of the race is more downhill or flat. And you could follow this leading group in the back, saving some energy. And then if you're lucky enough and smart enough to make a good position work on the final two, three kilometers, and with some luck, you, and you're a good sprinter, then you just pass the scares and can stand on top at on the podium on this final sprint. So everything can happen in this final sprint. But on the other hand, we have to say skiers like Roman Furga or Dario Colonia, they, ha they have so much experience in World Cup, in World Championships, at Olympics, where this tough sprint decisions are on the program all the time so they know how to position themselves and they know how to win such a final sprint so they are still definitely the big favorites for the podium Roman Furger, Dario Colonia and then Maurice Magnifica from Switzerland but we will see maybe we will see a big surprise with a young Swiss or French skier on the podium. has passed the next intermediate time in Celarina now this is the place where the sprint section is placed was I was talking about before it's a sprint for each and every skier 75 meters and at the end of the day the ranking will show who finished this 75 meters in Celarina the fastest. So not only the elite skiers participate in this sprint, also each and every skier of the 13,000 participants today has the chance to win. This is also a new thing here in 2023. The organizers already have been speaking about keeping this race course over the St. Moritz Lake. Oh, a pole in the tracks. This was probably the pole of somebody who broke his pole and then changed somewhere along the track. But then, of course, you have two different poles and somewhere your serviceman is waiting for you and then you can get two new poles which are your size and which are the same size, most importantly.
Oh, it's already the 53rd edition of this traditional ski race, the Engadin Ski Marathon. In the end of a long ski marathon season. Yeah, it seems like the skiers are now taking out the pace. It was Kla Ursin Nutha making the leading work now. Now going to the back again to keep some energy. Yeah, usually I think the Engadin Ski Marathon is so famous among, especially among the recreational, the popular skiers, because it's in the end of the season and it's always great weather, sunshine. I mean, today not so much sunshine as we used to, but still, the weather is great for skiing. And it's a great season ender for many, even though there are still two races on the World Loppet calendar. The Norwegian Birkebeiner Rennet. And then, in the beginning of April, in Iceland, the Fossavatn Skangan, which will be the end of the season of the World Loppet winter season. World Loppet Ski Federation, the Engadin Ski Marathon, is a member of this federation since the beginning. Of course, an important member of World Loppet. World Loppet combining the 19 biggest ski marathons in the world under one federation. Marathons like the Vasa Loppet, which is the only ski race bigger than the Engadin Ski Marathon, has been taking place past week in Sweden. Also the Norwegian Birkebeiner Rennet, much longer in Italy. All these races are part of World Loppet. And the great thing about the World Loppet races is... Oh, here we see the speed of uh, this leading ski though, following the leading group. Almost 30 kilometers per hour, so really a high pace. Yeah, the great thing with this World Loppet race is it that the uh, elite skiers, the best of the best, are skiing together with thousands of thousands of skiers. Some of them are doing their first race here at the Engadin Ski Marathon and standing on the same starting line. Like this skier, Kla Ursin Nufer, a Swiss uh, national team skier. Followed by Fabrizio Albasini, who did a lot of leading work already. And I think behind him, a French skier, Arnaud Chotems. I am wondering where my secret favorite, Fabian Stotzek, is placed. I haven't seen him in the leading group so far. And I think when I check the last intermediate timing, I can't see him. Eli Faret from France here with the starting number 39. Also in the leading group. Number 30, Simon Chapeau, French skier. Maurice Magnifica on the third position. Cedric Steiner also still in the leading group. The local skier from Davos. Yeah, 
It appears that Angele Lechera, number 32, here in the back of the group, has not his best day. He is always very in the back of the group. This is usually not a very good sign. Of course, because you're not able to answer if there would be an attack, an early attack, if three, four, five skiers start to increase the pace, then you're not able to answer, to reply and to follow them. So if you not need to, you probably would not ski in the very back of this group. And already minutes between this leading group and the next skiers. And slowly we're going into the hot, into the very hot phase of the race. The last 10 kilometers is just downhill. Here the leading lady is still Juliana Vero. Yeah, she has really found a very good group of male skiers to ski together with. Not even 15 kilometers to the finish anymore for her. And she already has some seconds between her and her chasing her chasers. I'm having a look outside of my window. I see directly onto the finish line. The finish is getting more and more busy. The first spectators are coming to the stadium. Beautiful helicopter shots here. Yeah, the sun is not coming out completely. But this is also good for the popular skiers who ski in the back because that means that the track won't be too deep for them. Of course, the warmer it is, the slushier the track becomes. So for them, it's good that the sun is not coming out. Only 10 kilometers, only 11 kilometers to the finish. Maurice Magnifica taking over the lead. Soon we will see the next intermediate sprint in La Punt. The second one and the last one. And this is also a very, very critical point when it comes to the decision in the end. If a skier is not in the leading group in La Punt, then it's over for him to fight for the victory. Because from La Bund to the finish, it's only downhill anymore, only a very, very short uphill section right before the finish. And it's still Angele Scherra who is in the back of this leading group. Yeah, so I'm sure the latest at La Bund, they will increase this pace to a maximum and then one by one will fall off this leading group. The first position fights will start. You have to be among the first, let's say, six skiers at the final turn before the final stretch, before the finish stretch, if you want to win this race.
Now it's getting exciting more and more. Maurice Magnifica in the lead, looking over his shoulder. Who is in back of me? Number nine, Fabrizio Albacini is following him. I'm wondering if Kla Ursin Nuther has a very, very strong day or if he is losing all his energy with all the leading work he's doing over the past kilometers. He has done so much work now in the lead. So we will see. Maybe, and there he is going into the lead again. Magnifica, of course. Yeah, he is chilled enough and experienced enough to know I can go into the back into some positions in the back now to save some energy for the final kilometers and you see he's uh, like on fifth six seven position so if necessary he could answer to a potential attack but he is in the back to save energy for the final kilometers so he knows definitely what he's doing there the experienced French skier Maurice Magnifica. And again, again, it's Nufa in the lead. Followed by Fabrizio Albacini, also always in the lead. Over the past 20 kilometers, it's always these two skiers who are doing the leading work. Of course, it's not easy, but they do not seem to be quite tired already and here he is Roman Furger last year's winner four times winner in at Engadin ski marathon his last Engadina as a pro athlete followed by Dario Colonia of course he knows he has to follow the bib number one because the victor will lead over Roman Furga. So, not surprisingly, that Dario Colonia is following him. Steiner Cedric, number 28, always in uh, among the first five skiers. Candide Prolong. Nothing changed in the women's race yet. It seems like... Yeah, it's still Vero Giuliana. He is skiing together with this group of about 5-10 men. She has 23 seconds to the chasing group. To the next group with... Anja Weber, Kelly, Nadja and Marina. And then the French skiers, Chopal, Allier, Celine and Emilie Bulle. But it appears to me, I don't want to say too much too early, but I would be surprised if, yeah, I just say it, if Vero Giuliana won't win today. It's already 20 seconds. She has a great group to ski together with. She's definitely on the podium if nothing unexpected happens. But I would say she will win today. Only eight kilometers to go. So as I said, it won't be a new track record. Of course, the conditions are not perfect for that. 
Oh man, I'm really impressed by the performance of these young Swiss skiers of Fabrizio Albazini. 19 years old. Of Cedric Steiner. Okay, he's not that young anymore, but still performing very well, doing all the leading work. And of Kla Ursin Nufa, who is 21 years old. So the young Swiss guys are making the action here. And we really have to say heads off for their performance so far. And I really, I really hope for one of them at least to be on the podium today. Same counts for Kurdin Red, 23 years old. Yeah, we are having a short breakaway here of the first skiers. This is because you can see here the final, the last intermediate sprint at kilometer 33.6. And if I see it correctly, it's Steiner Cedric to win this intermediate sprint. Yes, young Swiss uh, skier. Hey, Lovera from France on the second position. Nutha and Albasini three and fourth. And now the game begins. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's going to be interesting. Now the position, the fight for positions will start. Dario Colonia on position 19. He has to do some work to come into the lead of the group now to fight himself into the lead. Of course, he can do this. This does not mean anything for him now, but he has to do some of work now. Lapunt, what a few beautiful village to pass through. Bastien Poirier, number 31, also still in the leading group. Also a name that you hear more often when it comes to ski marathons, when it comes to World Open races. Always good for a podium, but probably not today. So now only 7.5 kilometers to the finish, only descending, so a high pace. Aha, here is the first breakaway. As you see, really, the game is on now. Now the decisions will be made. Maybe a little bit too early for this attack, but let's see. Lovera Victor from France has 20 meters gap, created 20 meters gap. At least this helps to make the leading group smaller and smaller. We will see if he can keep on this high pace. I don't think so, but who knows? But definitely now this leading group will lose the one or the another skier when the pace is becoming higher and higher. Only seven kilometers to go. Sunshine is coming out here in the finish in Sanf. So the sun will welcome the winners of the 53rd Engadin Ski Marathon in not even, yeah, 10 minutes maybe. 
Victor Lovera with an early attack from France, 23 years old. But the gap is getting bigger and bigger, so this is becoming serious here. Of course, this would mean a lot to ski the final seven kilometers all on your own. In the back, the leading group, they can change in the leading work. But man, this is already 50 meters gap. So he has to go for it. Either go for it now or lose it. I think he just realized either Go for it, keep on this high pace, making this crazy thing, early attack and go until to the finish with this pace. All on one card or losing everything. Of course, this costs so much energy for him now. So if the group will overtake him again, I think he has lost so much energy that he won't ski for victory anymore, but maybe he can really defend this breakaway. Now the leading lady is passing La Punt, and not surprisingly, it's Juliana Vero. Now it's interesting how much gap she has to her chasers. It's 15 seconds. No, I think she will win. Honestly, it's more than 20 seconds the gap is getting bigger and bigger so if she's not having a crash or something totally unexpected is happening the winner of the ladies engelin ski marathon 2023 will be juliana vero from switzerland yes here are the next chasers 60 36 seconds later, Weber and Kellen, Kellen. These are the skiers fighting for the podiums. It will be a fight between two sisters, Marina and Nadia Kellen. But let's have a look to the leading group men's race. It's still Victor Lovera with the number 55 in the lead from France. After 21 minutes, only 5.5 kilometers to the finish. Wondering who is doing the leading work now in the chasers group. Yeah, this is. 50 meters, maybe even 60, 70. No, it's much more already. But here, now the downhill sections, they are really hard for Victor Lovera. He has to put all his energy into keeping this high pace because the chasing group, they have, they can change in the, in the lead and work together to make it up to him. So these downhill sections are really hard for him. I think five kilometers is too long to keep this lead. But let's see. Oh man, how exciting is this final of the Engelin Ski Marathon? Now passing Sus. It's the final village the skiers will pass. Usually you see a beautiful winter scenery. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about. One skier after another is dropping off this leading group. Now, 14 seconds lead for Victor Lovera. This is not much. This is not much for the past five kilometers. Bastian Pori is falling off the leading group. Such a high pace now. 
Right here, one of the last uphills. And it's still the strong Frenchman, Lobera Victor in elite. Yeah, he is fighting. He is really putting everything into this one attack. And he has 15 seconds and only 4.5 kilometers to go. If he has some energy left, he has to put everything into this attack now. There is no space for him to go a little bit slower because then immediately the chasing group will catch him and then there is no chance for him to win this race anymore too much energy lost look at his face he is fighting he is fighting but he looks still strong oh man i'm impressed by him look how he's skiing this uphill only a few minutes to the finish it's getting louder outside in the finish here when I look out of my window. Oh man, I can't say it. I can't really say it. If Victor Lovera can make it to the finish, he looks strong. But of course, this breakaway costs a lot of energy for him until now. Unfortunately, we can't see who is doing the leading work in the chasers group. Slowly, Roman Furger and Dario Colonia have to be in the front if they want to fight for their fifth victory at the Engadin Ski Marathon. Only one skier in history managed to win it five times. It's Bertli Giga and Roman Furger and Colonia both have four victories here. So, of course, they both want to go for the fifth victory. 15 seconds leading gap for Victor Lovera. And it seems like still the young Swiss skiers are doing the leading work in the chasing group. I think I saw Al Albasini Fabrizio on top of the leading group. Yeah, here the four kilometers mark. Oh man, I'm so excited. This would be a really, really surprise if Victor Lovera can make it to the finish. As first. Yeah, again, all the upper section. I think the upper section are in his favor. Here he can put a lot of energy in keeping this 15 seconds gap. Yeah, the gap is getting smaller and smaller but this is an uphill section so we cannot this is still 15 seconds anyway if he wins or not big big performance of Lovera Victor now okay the lead is getting smaller and smaller only 11 seconds now it's maurice magnifica on top of the chasing group i think he is leading this group to his compatriot to lovera another frenchman i know chantem is second and then the swiss skiers following so three kilometers to go he is having a look over his shoulders. Where are the others? 10 seconds still lead for him. This will be so close, ladies and gentlemen. If we can manage to the final turn, at least, to be still in the front, then he can probably defend his lead. But it's still 2.7 kilometers. 2.7 kilometers are not long because it's going downhill until the finish. Okay, now the, the gap is melting 
and melting. Maurice Magnificat tries to bring this chasing group to catching this leader. Of course, this also means a lot of energy and a lot of effort for Maurice Magnificat. And this again could mean an advantage for Roman Furger and maybe also Dario Colonia, who are already waiting there somewhere in the middle of this leading group or chasing group now. What an exciting finish here. What an exciting finish of the 53rd Engadin Ski Marathon. Only two kilometers to go. And it's still about 10 seconds between Victor Lovera and the Chasers. But two kilometers are probably too long. He's always looking between his legs or over his shoulder to see how far the chasers are behind him. And here you see now five Swiss skiers on top, five Swiss national team skiers on top of the chasers group. They are stop kidding here now. Now it's time to catch this Frenchman. That's their goal now. I think it's Candy Pralong now. He is really, really stopped playing around. Now the pace is on maximum. Only five meters. And is it? Candid Prolong now making his attempt for the victory. 1.7 kilometers before the finish. The Frenchman is taken over and I think there is no energy left for him anymore. And is it right? Is it correct? No, it's number eight. Steiner Niklas. Steiger Niklas, Switzerland. Wow, a young Swiss skier in the lead. He is trying his luck now with 1.5 kilometers to go. Only 18 years old. It's three Swiss skiers creating a small gap. This could really be the surprise winner we were talking about during the race. If number eight Steiger Niklas can defend his lead now. It would be a local winner from Samedan. We passed this place here. Only 18 years old. He is in the lead. Followed by, yeah, by whom? Of course, Roman Furga, last year's winner on the second position now. And Rüsch Jason on the third position. These are the three names in the lead. But now, who is overtaken here? This is not a Swiss skier, I think. What an exciting finish. It can't be more exciting. First, this early attack from Lovera Victor. Then defending his lead until 1.5 or 2 kilometers before the finish. And now it's young Swiss skiers fighting with the favorites with Roman Furga, with Dario Colonia, with Maurice Magnifica on the final kilometers. Last kilometer to go. Condit Pralong, leading work now. Yeah, you see the faces of the skiers. Stop kidding. This now is serious work. Dario Colonia is on, I think, seventh, eighth position. But still, now the final, final downhill. No crashes here, please. No crashes here. Yeah, it looks good. And now, very dangerous turns. This would be very, very bad luck if you have a crash here. Last turn. These are the position works I was talking about. This is really fighting for every position. Last turn. Here you can see the last turn, and then it's the final stretch. Oh man, attention, no crashes here. It's number 35 heading to the final stretch as first. 
Jean-Paul Arnaud from France. It seems like Jean-Paul Arnaud from France is in the lead. But who is coming on the left side? The Swiss skiers. But it's a Frenchman winning the Engadin Ski Marathon. Arnaud Jean-Paul and the second Frenchman. Mancini second and Jason Jürsch as third. It's really a surprise winner at the Engadin Ski Marathon. And Victor Lovera can make it as fourth into the finish. What an exciting finish. It were the Frenchman making the best position works, the best fights on this final corners, on this finish stretch. Oh man, am I exhausted and I was just commentating this race. Yeah, you did it, guys. Great job. What a race. Shotem Ano. And look at this final sprint and then the second French skier following him. They out sprinted the strong Swiss team. But Jason Jürsch defends the Swiss national pride with a third place also on the podium of Engadin Ski Marathon. No chance for the number one Roman Vogel this time. And also no chance for Dario Colonia. So no fifth victory for both of them. And here he is celebrating. Yeah, what a great final. He really deserved it. And I think Victor Lovera really, really, really deserved the fourth position with this great breakaway. And he made it really, really, yeah, exciting for us with this great breakaway five kilometers before the finish. Too bad that he was not strong enough to defend it until the finish. But hey, only one not even a second behind the winner after such a great breakaway this is really great achievement and yeah it turned out as i thought this uh, young skiers from switzerland niklas steiger fabrizio albasini and who was the third one who were skiing in front all the time kla ursin nutha they did a great race and they did great working in the lead all the time. But of course, then you miss all the energy for the final sprint. And now, ladies and gentlemen, focus on the women's race. This probably won't be that exciting as the men's race. Here is the leading lady with the bib number 305, Juliana Vero. Coming from Switzerland, Cernes. She will bring home this victory. And she is defending the national pride of Switzerland. A winner from Switzerland on the female podium. And then we will see if the French ladies can fight for position two and three against Nadia and Marina Kellin and Anja Weber, who are the chasers. But now, follow, let's follow Juliana Vero when she's skiing her final 1.5 kilometers and then bringing home her victory. She really made a great job in the beginning of the race to be in front and then when the men leading group were overtaking the ladies, she found a good position 
and a good company to ski together with and this was the secret for her victory today. She also has skied uh, much longer this year already, early this season. Performed quite well with 23rd position. And the second race here in Engadin, um, at the short distance of La Diagonela, she won. So she had a good performance this year already. Oh no, a crash here. But fortunately, not Juliana, Vero, this would be very, very bad luck if she would lose the race just because of a crash here. It's always not easy for the ladies in such a ski marathon because they usually have to ski against a bunch of male skiers. But it seems like this group of male skiers is fair enough and give her the lead of this group just that she can celebrate her great victory at the Engadin. Ski marathon. Oh no, here is the men's are overtaking her. Okay, then I think she will slow down now just to not risk anything. Here she is, the lucky winner from Switzerland. Home victory for Juliana Vero. Cheers and applause by the male skiers skiing together with her. Yes, you can celebrate. You deserved it. What a great race. Oh man, look at these emotions. How beautiful is that? Yeah, gratuliere. Congratulations. Great race of Juliana Vero. She can't believe it. So great to see. This is what Engerin Ski Marathon is about. This is what World Up is about. This is what long distance skiing is about. And here comes Nadia Kellin with 27 seconds later. Anja Weber on third position. So a Swiss podium. The ladies are celebrating together. What a beautiful picture. And Marina Kellen, the young sister of Nadia Kellen on fourth position. A very good race of all these four French, uh, sorry, all these four Swiss skiers. Nice job. <laughs> Beautiful pictures here in the finish, in Chanf, the finish of the Engadin Ski Marathon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the party can start. <laughs> Let's talk about start. This is the funny thing. The first ski has arrived to the finish, but the start in Maloya has still not finished yet. Still the final starting waves are Starting right now, it's 28 starting waves, so this takes some time. This is because of the narrow, the narrow parts of the track. Yeah, the happy winner, Juliana Vero. Here, the oh no, here, the crash. Probably not necessary at this point of the race, but good that nothing happened too. Juliana Vero, this would be a very bad luck if you lose the race just because such a crash. She can't believe it. I guess she was not thinking about winning this race this morning, but here she is. Her first victory at the Engadin Ski Marathon. Overwhelmed. What a beautiful finisher picture. Yeah, Nadia Kellin were not able to defend her victory of last season, but still a great result with second place. Cheered by all the bells here, the characteristic bells. Emilia Bullet, 2 minutes 40 
now with a gap of two minutes 40 in the finish seems like not her day usually she has the ability to win such a race so probably not her race and i think we just saw let's check if he's already in the finish draw on a headland the olympic winner from norway of course not skiing on a professional level, level anymore with almost 50 years but still good performance no was another norwegian no the norwegians were not that bad this year Look how beautiful this emotions at the Engadin Ski Marathon. As I said it already, this is what marathon skiing, what World Lopet is all about. This emotions. Of course, among the winners, but also among all the popular skiers who will arrive in five hours, in maybe six hours. They will smile, some of them are crying just because they're overwhelmed to finish this race it's a very special thing and just look at the faces here on the right um, corner you see Emilia Bulle and Celine Lallier Chopin the French skiers I think they're not very satisfied with their performance today usually they are able to win such races but it was not their day today maybe they didn't find the right group to ski together with maybe they were not in the best performance Here the final classification of the man, Anno Schottem from France, followed by his compatriot Tom Mancini, and third place going to Switzerland to Jason Rich. Dario Colonia on place 14. You see, only three seconds behind already, only 14th place. Arnaud Chotin, a big surprise for us, for you as well. Yes, yes, I'm very, very, very happy. Uh, it's so amazing for me. Uh, uh, I have a very, very good feeling on this track, and uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, my team and the coach uh, and uh, it's so amazing to to win uh, with uh, Tom Mancini. It's my uh, best friend. Uh, it's uh, very good, uh, very cool, and uh, well, yes, uh, I'm very very happy. Was it helpful that Victor attacked early? Yeah, 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, Say it in French. Yeah, but j'ai attaqué Tekel à. La dernière, le virage en tête, j'étais vraiment pas très bien placé dans les 5-6 à, à 1 km. C'était vraiment dur et j'ai vraiment fait un beau virage. J'ai réussi à vraiment dérouler mon ski jusqu'à la ligne d'arrivée. Donc c'est vraiment incroyable, là, surtout avec Tom. Là, ça, on va fêter ça, c'est vraiment cool. The track, how was it? The snow on the lakes, difficult? Yeah, very difficult. La glace était vraiment, enfin, sur les lacs, c'était vraiment dur. Il y avait vraiment que de la glace, donc c'était très abrasif. Donc, euh, donc non, non, c'était vraiment des conditions euh, difficiles. Il y avait des parties de neige nouvelle qui n'étaient pas faciles non plus à skier. Donc euh, c'était un beau, très très beau parcours. Ça, ça a bien skié, c'était vraiment, vraiment une belle course. Et je reviendrai parce que j'ai toujours voulu et rêvé de faire cette course. Et je suis vraiment content de l'accrocher aujourd'hui. Merci. Yeah, Beautiful story, the two best friends, as he just said, Tom Mancini. His best friend finishing second. What a great story. Maurice Magnifica. Also, he was in a good position, but not far enough in the lead to be able to win. Here are the final results in the ladies' race. Juliana Vero, Nadia Kellin, Anja Weber and Marina Kellin from Switzerland. Then the first French skier, Emilie Bulle, with a gap of 2 minutes and 40. 
Desiree Steiner, Celine Chopal Allier, already four minutes in back. Then Tina Kurek from, from France and Hanna Fine and Lea Fine Fischer on 10th position. So it seems like Nadia Kellen, after not the best results at the World Championships in Planica, she's now back on podium at the Engelin Ski Marathon. Quite sure that's a great feeling for her. Maria Adela Zampa, Tiana Wola, Susi Meinen. Many Swiss skiers, of course, among the first 20. What a great race it was. Beautiful weather. I think now it's uh, great weather for all the popular skiers who are coming now, who are starting probably just now. It's not too warm, so the track won't probably be too steep, like um, usually when it's that warm. How happy can we be that we saw an Engadin Ski Marathon in 2023? Chopper to the organizers. Great, thank you. And... Juliana Vero. Wir sind überrascht. Sie glauben nicht unbedingt, dass es so aussieht, wie wenn sie genau wissen, was sie machen heute. Nein, also es ist, es ist unglaublich. Ich habe ich wohne hier in Mingadine und seit ich klein bin, sind wir fast jedes Jahr da und haben das Rennen angeschaut. Und seit ein paar Jahren kann ich selber laufen. Das war immer ein Ziel von mir, auch ein Traum. Und dass es dieses Jahr schon aufgeht, ist, ist unbeschreiblich. Let's try it in English, Juliana. Congratulations for your first victory. Are you surprised? Yeah, I'm really surprised. It's just unbelievable. As I said, I live here in Engadine and it's my, it's my dream since I'm a little girl to once win this race. And now it's, I'm just speechless. <laughs> Have you had information about the other uh, girls behind you uh, when you were racing? Yeah, when the men came, it was a little chaotic, and I wasn't sure like who, if I'm really the first girl. But afterwards, they told me, and then it was just just go to the finish line. <laughs> you live very close from here, so for you, it's a very special day, I guess. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, I live here and I just know this race and I train a lot on these tracks and it's just, I don't know what to say, I'm just happy. <laughs> yeah, I think you do not need to say anything more. It's okay, just enjoy your victory. Vero Giuliana, she has said enough on the course. She showed everyone that she is a world-class skier who is able to win an international ski marathon. Look at these beautiful pictures. So many emotions in one moment. Of course, it's a very special thing to win when you live right here along the course. Everyone knows you, everyone cheers for you. Probably your whole family, all your friends are here. Special thing to win a ski marathon at home. As she said, she's training on these tracks all the time. Maybe this was a big help for her. She knows every corner, every uphill, every downhill. Yeah, this was the Engadin Ski Marathon 2023, 53rd edition. Only two ski marathons to go this winter in the World Open Series. It's only the Birkebeiner Rennet in Norway, Lillehammer, taking place next weekend. And then the Fossavatten Skangan in Iceland. And then we had another very successful and most importantly, relieving World Open Winter with all ski marathons, all important ski marathons able to take place. And I think the organizers here at the Engadina, they will have a good sleep tonight. After some sleepless nights, now the race is over. Everything worked out. 
perfect. Now a short summary. The start in Maloya. What a beautiful place. <laughs> Look at the lake right to the left of the starting. I'm not sure if I would be that confident skiing on the tracks if I see a melting lake. But of course the course inspection, they inspected every meter of the course and they knew that the race course is in a good condition and that there is no danger. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was an honor for me and a huge pleasure to be with you, to be your commentator at this year's Engerin Ski Marathon. My name is Gunnar Slöbel and I hope to see all of you next year again for the 54th edition of the Engadin Ski Marathon. Thanks for being with us, thanks for listening and see you next year. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the winner's ceremony. Jason Rusch on third place. First Swiss skier. And the finish of Sam. Tom Mancini. Pour la France, félicitations, Arnaud Chanton! Arnaud Chanton from France, the winner, the surprise winner.
First the flowers, but for the winner, more importantly, soon we will see it. A great Sieg for Arno Schotter for Tom Mancini and Zeichen Riesch. Here are the winners. Congratulations, guys. Great job. And we really have to do a big shout out to Victor Lovera with his attempt, his breakaway, his attack five kilometers before the finish, finishing fourth. And also to the young Swiss skiers who did a lot of leading work. Now the ladies. Anja Weber. Anja Weber. On third place, Switzerland. Congratulations. Nadia Kellin. Nadia Kellin, last year's winner. Second this year. I think she can be satisfied. And here, Juliana Vero, big winner, local hero. Three young Swiss skiers. That means a good future for Swiss cross country skiing. Twenty two, twenty one, and Marina, uh, the third one, Anja Weber. She's also twenty one, so all young skiers. What a great future for, for Swiss skiing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, but now it's time for me to say goodbye. My name is Gunnar Slöbel. It was a pleasure for me to commentate you through this race, through the 53rd Engadin Ski Marathon. And see you next year for the 54th edition. Thank you and goodbye.